Good morning to you and welcome to Morning Prayer on this Friday the 12th of August 2022. My name is Reverend Jo Richards and I'm rectory in Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred's and St Peter's and lovely that you've joined us on another very warm day here in Canterbury. So as we gather together, O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 31. Into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me, make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. Take me out of the net that they have laid secretly for me. For you are my strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. I put my trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. For you have seen my affliction and known my soul in adversity. You have not shut me up in the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow my soul and my body also. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbours, an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten like one that is dead out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. I've heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my life. But my trust in you, O Lord, I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and save me for your mercy's sake. Lord, let me not be confounded, for I have called upon you. But let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence that speak against the righteous with arrogance, disdain and contempt. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid out for those who fear you, which you have prepared in the sight of all for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the shelter of your presence. From those who slander them, you keep them safe in your refuge from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his steadfast love. When I was a city besieged, I had said in my alarm, I have cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my prayer when I cried out to you. Lord, lo love the Lord, all you his servants, for the Lord protects the faithful and repays to, full, to the full the proud. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait in hope of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Samuel, and it's chapter one, uh, sorry, first Samuel, chapter 17, verses 31 through all the way through to 54. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul and he sent for him. 
David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the drawer, strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defiled the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion, of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armour. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armour, and he tried to walk, in, tried to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk in these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth pebbles from the wadi and put them in the shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog, and you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give you flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the sea. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give you the dead bodies of the Philistine army, this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by the sword and spear for the battle is the lord's and he will give you into our hand when the philistine drew nearer to meet david david ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the philistine david put his hand in his bag took out a stone slung it and struck the philistine on the forehead the stone sank in sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He grasped his sword, drew it out of its sheath and killed him. Then he cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The troops of Israel and Judah rose up with a shout and pursued the Philistine as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Shaharim as far as Gath and Ekron. The Israelites came back from chasing the Philistines and they plundered their camp. David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armour in his tent. And now for our canticle. Rise up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His, appearance is, his appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers like the spring rains that water the earth. O oh, Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O oh Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I've hewn them by the prophets, and my 
and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Our second reading today is from Luke, and it's chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day, two of them were called to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since their things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us, they were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have declared was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost ev evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning whilst we were walking and talking on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. They, then they told them what had happened on the road and how he had been known, made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And now for our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Be, forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And now for the Benedictus. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. 
and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come together on this beautiful day and perhaps reflecting on that story of Emmaus, as the disciples listened, or as Jesus listened to the disciples, so may we, O Lord, this day ahead, listen to others. Be present, walking beside people, attentive listening. listening to people who perhaps have troubled hearts, listening to those who perhaps this day are exploring faith, listening to those who perhaps struggling with their physical health, their mental health, meeting people where they're at as Jesus met with those walking on the road to Emmaus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our world this day, particularly those areas where there is conflict. We continue to hold in our hearts and minds the people of Ukraine. For those who've left loved ones, for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. For those other places in the Middle East that are on our hearts and minds at this time. Praying particularly for the people of the Holy Land, Palestine and Israel. Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this day, we pray for our emergency services, for those who, not just locally here in our country, but those who are fighting wildfires, particularly across France at this time, as the impact of climate change is becoming a reality to so many. We pray for those who will perhaps be uh, tending to wildfires here across the next couple of days. We pray for our fire service, our police, our ambulance and our coast guards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our church, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop, for Mark, our Area Dean and for all those known to us who minister across our benefice, across our deanery, our diocese and beyond. The ministry of picking up the phone and the ministry of listening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those this day who are struggling in their physical health, their mental health. For those on our benefice prayer list. For those on our personal prayer list. For those known only to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who at this time are mourning the loss of loved ones. For those who are perhaps preparing a fun for a funeral. And for those whose anniversary of death falls this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the uh, church's cycle of prayer, today we've been asked to pray for the Queen and the members of Parliament and the Armed Forces, for peace and justice in the world, for those who work for reconciliation, for those whose lives are devastated by war and civil strife. And we pray particularly for prisoners, refugees, 
and our homeless people as we pray for those who perhaps this day find themselves on our streets here in Canterbury, as we pray and give thanks for the work of Catching Lives, Porchlight and Canterbury City Council. So, Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us. It's always lovely to, to worship together and for your comments, which are always very welcome. Please do always write in the comments. As I say, it's good, good to chat. And do join us at six or join me at six for night prayer. Our service is on Sunday, eight o'clock at um, St Dunstan's for said Eucharist. Sun Eucharist, 9.30 at St Peter's, 11 o'clock St Mildred's. And then we've got open table again at three o'clock for 3.30 start at St. Peter's. Bye-bye. God bless and have a good day. Bye for now. Bye.